hello good morning welcome to my channel um i'm just going to do a little series on of short videos on aging paper using different techniques so this is the first one and i am going to use a plain it's a plain piece of just standard white photocopy paper now i am working on this journal at the moment and I'm just doing all the bits and bobs of finishing off. And there's one of the transparencies I just tagged onto there. I thought it looked great. And I wanted something to put in this envelope. And my other envelopes are sort of opened at the top or at the side, as you can see. But this one, I wanted it to be in there. So I've decided to put in some aged paper. And this is what I'm going to do on quite a few of the pockets that I've got left. So I printed onto standard photocopy paper. Now then, as always, when I print, there's always a white border. So you can tear that off if you want to do. Um, however, I've, I have got some of these. Actually, no, we'll not use the decolleg scissors. We'll tear it. We'll make it as simple as we can. My decolleg scissors I got at a um, charity shop. But I know not everybody has them, so let's make it as simple as we can. So you can either just tear around yourself with your hands, you know, like fold and tear, or using a ruler. When I fold and tear, it normally goes all over the place, so that's why I'm just using a ruler. Now... Mother Shipton. Who is Mother Shipton? Well, this is a Halloween uh, spooky journal. Mother Shipton was, I think it's around the 1400s in England. Uh, to play, oh, I don't know what to do there because it's very close. Uh, she was in a place, oh, what's it called? In Yorkshire, beginning with K. Uh, Oh, I've been so many times. Mother Shipton's Cave. I just can't remember where it is. Anyway, it's not far from here. Probably about, I don't know, 60 miles, if that. <clears throat> and um, I'm going to have to use the scissors because I don't want to lose Mother Shipton's prophecies there. So Mother Shipton was a wise woman. She was a herbalist. And she... Um, looked after the midwifery needs of the women she delivered the babies in the village she provided uh, medication based on herbs because obviously there was no <coughs> I could just nip to the chemist to buy something because there wasn't any so mother Shipton was the local herbalist anyway yes you've got it she was claimed to be a witch and uh, I don't know if she was banished to. Naresborough, that's where she's from, Naresborough. K-N-A-R-E-S-B-O-R-O-U-G-H. She, she went to a cave in Naresborough where she lived. And <clears throat> at this cave, it's been discovered over years, that things turn to stone. So Mother Shipton was blamed for that. It was as though she'd passed and she'd cursed the area because things in that area turned to stone. When actually it's later been discovered that um, there's a lot of limestone in the water. So the cave she lived in, if you are, you can actually take anything, a teddy bear, different things, and have it hung in the doorway. I think you'd have to pay in the entrance to the cave. <clears throat> and over a period of time, water will run over it and because of uh, the calcium and lime and different things in the water the the object will look as though it's turned to stone when it's not it's been covered uh, it's been petrified so it's the petrifying well it's a great place to visit um but what mother shipton's main things is prophecies and i do believe that a prophecies have come true now I've got some different inks. I've got a vintage photo. I've got a ground espresso. And I've got a tea dye. 
I've got a little old uh, sponge, makeup sponge here. So this, I've got a nail file, but I've also got a metal file as well, a little metal file as well. So I'm going to fold this how I would want it to go in my envelope. So I'm going to fold it like this. And I'm going to fold it again there. So there's my folds in place. Let's get my little bone folder. Yeah, so Mother Shipton, as a lot of women of her time, was accused of being a witch purely for looking after the local people. One of our early health visitors. Right, so there it is folded up. It doesn't look that old at the moment. I'm working on glass. I'm sorry if my bracelet catches. Um, I will try not to catch it on there. So then either take the file or your metal file. These metal files are a bit harsher. And file around the edges. Now, if you get a hole, it doesn't matter because it's supposed to be very old paper. So a little hole does not matter. And I'm going to file across the top there, rough it all up. And I'm going to turn it over and file on there. File again around the edges. I'll show you different ways of doing this using coffee stained paper and tea stained and different things. But this is just one method for now. Then I'm going to um, unfold that. You can see there's already a hole there. I'm just going to fold it the other way so that I get the other creases and do exactly the same. I remember the first time I saw a junk journal, I was at a fairy festival in Wales and this lady done, had this table full of the most, what I would say the most amazing box I had ever seen. And that's when I was first introduced to junk journals and I was looking through and I said to her, you must have so much um vintage paper, antique papers, and she like looked at me and she went, oh yeah, yeah. She probably didn't want to say, well actually I just made them all myself. So you can see there the, the lines and the score marks from doing this. So we've got a little bit there that's not done, so let's pull that. And she went, oh yeah, yeah. And she like looked at me and I thought, why is she looking at me like that? And it's only afterwards I've realised that yeah probably some of it was real vintage and antique papers but actually she's probably done a lot of that herself right it's just i'm just going to do a little sort of screw up now and do the same you know just so you go over some of some points undo this and have a look see what we think now some people can see the holes and things some people will then stick that onto another piece of paper so that you don't have the holes etc oh okay then so we've gone a little bit mad there so i am going to um i don't want to stick it on another piece of paper One thing that I'd, I have done, been known to do before now is to stitch that you know, through the sewing machine. In fact, shall we do that? 
can I do that? I'm going to do. I'm going to do. My sewing machine just so happens to be here. I'm actually going to see me sew. So when things tears and things happen, embrace it. Embrace it. So let's just get the sewing machine. Plug it in. Am I? Oh, I have twizzled round. Let's just take that out a bit. I'm just going to see the top of my machine. I'm just going to do the zigzag stitch and stitch down that. Just bear with me one minute. that happen really then I could show you what I did about it or what I do about it sorry for the arms and things sorry for the view of the PJs because yes I am it is early morning and I am sat here in my pajamas right so there we go I've stitched down it one of the holes appeared there but I think that looks good right so then um you can leave some of these dangling I mean, it would be good to sort of hand stitch it, but I haven't got the time to do that at the moment. Let's make sure we're all lined up again. Yes, we are. Right, and we're off. So then, get your inks. Now, I normally start with the lighter one. Oh, so I've got the tea dye here. This has got a bit, of, obviously had a bit of black on the sponge, but never mind. And I'm going to, oh, it's nice. It's good to do it on the glass. Uh, I'm just going to go around the edge. So it's a bit of a dirty tea dye, but never mind. Dirty tea dye. I mean, obviously, if I was doing something that wasn't supposed to be aged like this, then I would certainly not be using dirty tea dye. Think about those corners and things, how you want them to appear. It's good to go in with the lighter colour first, and then you can add... <clears throat> more colour onto the top of it and just sort of lose yourself in your in your tea dyeing and the last one it's important you get all the creases and things because you certainly if it was an old document you wouldn't have a um modern not a modern you wouldn't have one crease that was perfectly pristine unless it had been stored like in the library at oxford university or something all right that's that was that so i'm going to do the same on this side Now where you've done those, um, file those papers out, that's where we'll get out where the white lighter lines are, where, you, where the dye will be picked up. there so don't be afraid don't be shy with your inks have fun and just enjoy uh, using them
Another good thing to do is you could add water around the edge to make your paper curl as well, paper will curl. <coughs> right, so that is my tea. Then I'm gonna go over with some vintage photo. You can just sort of do it like this as well. You know, then you're not reaching over for things. Let's put some vintage photo on. That's why it's good to use glass because you've just sort of got it there. <clears throat> so I've gone from the tea, I'm building it up slightly now with vintage photo. And you see the aging and distressing occurring. I'm holding my paper quite tightly as well, because too taut, I should say, so as not to um, let it tear anymore. If it did tear, it's no biggie. It's no biggie. Now, with this being on your glass, it doesn't really matter if it goes onto your paper. It's just no problem at all. along there now that's filling in nicely and now it's looking older I've got a cup of tea let me have a cup of tea do you know what I'm doing today ladies I'm ironing as you can see now I'm not folding the paper over for the creases because one I can see them better now now I'm just sort of thinking where I'd want my paper to look darker yeah so you know what the day is today it's a very exciting day for me and i've been building up two for weeks ironing oh. so i've got some to do in the cup airing cupboard and i'm pegging out washing I've pegged out two loads this morning up to now my third one's in so there we go that's looking like that and then, <coughs> oh, I'm going to screw it up. Let's just put some, screw up the paper. Put my vintage photo. You can actually spray that with a bit of water if you want to do. And let's just do this. Actually just gonna uh, I'm actually just gonna tear some of that off like that out. and I'm gonna just do I wanna get my decals my decalies because I've torn it the wrong way and ended up with the white when you're making uh all paper tearing doesn't matter because it wouldn't be complete anyway Right, then I'm going to get my darker. This is Ground Espresso. I'm going to go over some of these places. And like I say, for journaling purposes, other people would um, glue that onto another piece of paper to write on the back. But I actually quite like it. I'm just concerned about this bit here. Shall I stitch it? Shall I glue it? 
I have got sellotape. Would we have had vintage sellotape in those days? Let's put some vintage sellotape on where it's been repaired over the years. So this actually is vintage sellotape. Let's just cut it. it doesn't cut with deco cheese. I'm going to just rub a bit of my ink on the sellotape to give it a bit more of a grungy appearance. So somebody in the 60s fix that. Let's put a bit more there. I, don't, I want to do a bit more tearing yet. I feel like uh, the corners are too pristine. So just keep grunging away and grunging away so you personally feel happy with it. I'm rubbing my sponge, you see, and my off screen. Just rubbing my sponge onto the sticky side. I'm going to put that on. Just get them threads on there. I do want it to look like it has been <coughs> repaired then in the past. There we go. I'm going to put some dark <coughs> on here. On that edge. And then I want it to look like somebody might have put like a cup of tea or something on it. So I've got a lid off a hairspray. I'm just going to Twirl that in there, put in a darker ink. I'm going to put that on. And you get that. Circular shape there. I'm going to do another. Across here. lovely <coughs> and let's just look for any white bits that we think mm, too white too white i remember uh, when i was younger at school we had to make treasure maps do you remember doing it with the lemon juice and oil in it some other way i suppose of doing it but it didn't have to make a mess of your your mum's iron uh that just looking at that natural crease there so i'm going to do that and i'm going to do it on the other side as well and let's put another natural crease across there i'll look at the other side too there we go mother shipton's prophecies <coughs> Now I think, compared to what it started like, that that looks old, good and old. I'm going to fold it. I had folded it. I'm going to fold it like this. And like this. There we go. Then let's just wipe my surface because I don't want this all over my book. Baby wipes, wipe up. Bring back my journal. Bring back my journal, and I'm going to pop that in to there. The envelope, and that will sit nicely for whoever. We've even got a little bit of mother shit, I think, peeping out there. That's good. So that will sit in there. So there's the front. There's this page. Need to pop something in there. There's that one with one of my transparencies. And there's mother Shipton peeping out the envelope. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed that. I will do some more techniques on aging paper using different methods. Thank you so much. I'm Sharon. You've been watching Be Divine Vintage. Thank you.